Hi, my name is Kmoth. This podcast is brought to you by Majuwa Tivet College, and it specifically relates to income tax and six for South African colleges. In this presentation, I'd like to deal with the calculation of tax liability for natural persons. I've already dealt with other components and that are essential in determining tax liability in part one to part three. In this part specifically, retirement fund deduction part four, I'd like to deal with the deductions uh, granted to retirement fund con- contributions. As you know, some of the people might contribute to the following funds, the pension fund, provident fund, or retirement annuity fund. If a taxpayer makes a contribution to these funds, a taxpayer will be allowed a deduction in terms of Section 11F. A deduction is not applicable in terms of Section 11A, as Section 23M specifically stated that deductions relating to employment are not uh, permissible. However, the exception to Section 23M uh, specifically mentioned that uh, such deductions, that is, deductions to pension fund, provident fund, and retirement fund can be specifically be deducted in terms of Section 11F. The tax consequences are if uh, such deductions, as mentioned above, are deductible in terms of Section 11F, uh, Section 11F will, will place uh, specific limits to, to the deduction of the actual amount. Essentially, what I'm saying is if an amount was deductible in terms of Section 11A, say an exp- a, a taxpayer incurred an amount of 20000 and such amount complied with the provisions of Section 11A, such amount would have been fully deductible without uh, subjecting it to limitations. However, a pension fund, provident fund, and retirement annuity fund are deductible, but they are subject to the provisions of uh, Section 11F. Provisions of Section 11F uh, brings a limitation in determining the amount that is deductible uh, and for, for these contributions. Without wasting your time, I'd like us to look at the provisions of uh, Section 11F and the given presentations. Firstly, students need to know that uh, if you want to determine a deduction specifically relating to those contributions, if a taxpayer is contributing to more than one fund, for argument's sake, let's say a taxpayer is contributing to the pension fund and the retirement annuity fund, you're going to add the two together and the total uh, deduction will be subject to the limitations of Section 11F. So you're not going to subject uh, each amount separately, but you're going to total the two amounts and then subject the total of the, of the two contributions to the provisions of Section 11F. Section 11F provides that um, contributions to retirement fund will be limited. The total contributions will be limited to the lesser of 350000 Remember, 350,000, it's a fixed rule. Let me quickly go to 350,000. There you go. I just quickly want to get a laser. There you go. Remember, this is a fixed rule. Uh, It's provided by the province of Section 11F, uh, subsection A of the South African Income Tax Act. Because most people would normally ask, how did you determine 350,000? It's a fixed rule. It's provided by the province of Section 11FA, as I've mentioned. So the total deduction relating to the retirement fund contributions will be limited to the lesser. Please, I I didn't indicate that, but remember, it will be limited to the lesser of 350,000 or... or is the lesser of 350,000 or B. B says... um, 27.5% 27.5% of the higher of remuneration or taxable income. Before I even show you the wording relating to that, I'd like to emphasize that, uh, remember the important rule is that this uh, uh, deduction is limited to the lesser of A, A being 350,000, and B. So it's limited to the lesser of A and B. However, for us to determine the amount of B will have to compare the greater of uh, 27.5% of remuneration and 27.5% of taxable income. 
Once we've determined the amount of B, we're going to compare A with B and we're going to take the lesser of the two amounts. I'd like to make an example before I even show you the provisions relating to subsection B. If in A we had an amount of 350,000, not if in A we always have an amount of 350,000. Say in B, after we did our calculations, we arrived at an amount of uh, 250,000. The lesser of the two would certainly be 250,000. Don't want to be confusing, let's leave it. We'll see it when we make it applicable to our given uh, question. I've already mentioned that how we arrive at the appropriate amount that will be taken into account as a deduction for our retirement fund. We're going to take the three, the three hundred. We're going to take the lesser of three hundred and fifty thousand. That's A. Apologies. That's supposed to read B. That's supposed to read as B. Can I get a pen? <laughs> B. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if you can follow. That's supposed to read as B. So essentially, what I'm saying is. Um, if for you to determine this deduction, you're going to take the lesser of 350, uh, which is which is A, and B will be represented by the B will be represented by by the higher of remuneration. So you have to determine the amount of remuneration. Once you've determined the amount of remuneration, you're going to apply 27.5. To determine the rent uh, equivalent and then once you've determined that in terms of the provisions of uh, uh, section 11 f subsection b roman figure 2 you're going to determine the taxable income once that has been determined you're going to determine 27.5 percent of the taxable income to cut the story short once you've determined um, the greater of the two, you're going to place it there. As I've mentioned, if it was 250, you're going to take the, the 250, let's say the greater of, of this two uh, was 250,000 for argument's sake. Say, say the 27.5 the of remuneration was 100,000 and the 27.5 was of taxable income was 250, you're going to take the 250 to represent the entire of B, then you're going to um, compare A and B if B result into a lesser of the two figures. Remember I said it's 250 for purpose of this illustration. We're going to take the 250 and compare it to the actual amount. And then we're going to arrive at our deduction. Don't worry, I'll explain it once more again when we apply it to our question. Okay, now I want us to go to question four and, and make it applicable. 2016, remember that's exactly what we've been doing. There we go. At what stage? Where are we? We're there. We, we, we want to determine the deduction that will be granted by section 11F, specifically relating to the pension contribution. We didn't have any other contributions that are associated with retirement we didn't have pro we don't have provident fund for this taxpayer nor do we have the retirement annuity fund so we're simply going to limit section 11f to that item i just quickly want to highlight it what color can we use uh, green there you go i'm going to highlight it in green so we specifically told firstly we need to determine the amount that we're going to subject to the limitations of section 11f the amount that is the actual contribution by the taxpayer was should be determined as 8.5 of the uh, salary. That's essentially how uh, pension contributions are determined. They're a certain percentage of a taxpayer's salary. So it has already been calculated. Let's quickly go there. I'm quickly going to go to... Um, let's go to a spreadsheet. There you go. Uh, remember that's exactly what we've been using we've already did a presentation relating to all those other amounts now this is where we at we here i'm gonna go there that's where we at let me just quickly highlight this there you go we specifically dealing with 
we're dealing with that uh, item. Remember this specifically relates to pension. Pension is part of the retirement fund and uh, deduction will be applicable in terms of Section 11F. Let's quickly determine the actual amount. It's important that you, all, you determine the actual amount. So the actual amount, I'm going to open a bracket. We're specifically told that the actual amount will be 8%. I'm going to go insert. I want to multiply, insert, close. So it's 8% of that amount. Remember, for the purpose of uh, this exercise, we've already determined that salaries was 96,000. So it will be 8% of 96,000. So I'm just simply going to say 96,000. Please do your own calculations. Uh, so you're going to say 8%. I have to punch in because uh, that cell won't necessarily perform because I didn't start with an equal sign. So please punch it in. It's 96,000. Multiply by 8%. So the actual amount that we want to subject to the limitations of section 11F, it's 76. Eight zero. There you go. Remember, it's always important to determine the actual amount. That's exactly what we want to subject. So this amount will be limited to the lesser of three fifty and the greater of twenty seven point five percent of remuneration or taxable income. Let's do the calculations. We don't have to do a calculation relating to A. It's already provided. Now we want to determine the twenty seven point five of remuneration. Firstly, we're going to start by determining remuneration for the purpose of our studies is not provided, but I'd like to emphasize that in other institutions, remuneration is always provided. So remuneration, allow me, I'm going to highlight in green anything that should be taken into account in the determination of what we call remuneration. Remuneration, firstly, is, is uh, income that is attributable to the taxpayer's employment. So any, any, any income item that is attributable to the taxpayer's employment will be regarded as remuneration. If you want to deal with, uh, if you want to get remuneration correctly, you must ensure that uh, that item arose from the taxpayer's employment. So there has to be an employer and an employee relationship. Let's start with the easy item. You know, uh, people that are employed will earn what we call salaries. That will be regarded as remuneration. Let's go green. There you go, remuneration. That definitely from employment, remuneration. That from employment, remuneration. That housing, it's a fringe benefit that arises from employment, remuneration. The interest received does not necessarily uh, arise from employment. It could arise because you invested in a financial institution that has got nothing to do with employment. I'm going to skip that. This as well does not arise from employment. I'm going to skip it. Does not arise from employment. I'm going to skip it. Rental income. It does not arise from employment, I'm going to skip it. However, that item arises from employment, that will also be taken into account in the determination of remuneration. Remember, uh, all these gratuity, accumulated leave, lump sum uh, pension fund are specifically excluded in the determination of uh, section. We take them into account if we want to determine remuneration. So I'm not going to take them into account so remember the total of these amount came to that amount. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take that amount and we're going to deduct everything that is not considered to be remuneration. So I'm going to take that amount, 171900. Let's quickly go there. We want to determine what remuneration is. So here. Remember, we want to determine what remuneration is. It was 171. 900. We're going to less all amounts that are not considered to be remuneration. 14,000 relating to interest, not remuneration. We're going to exclude it there. We're going to minus 2,500, which is not remuneration. I'm also going to minus the 10,000, which is also not remuneration. There you go. I'm going to go equals to, I'm an enter. <laughs> so 
So there you go, just quickly, um, let me open it a little. There you go, so I'm just manually going to do the calculation. I'm just manually going to do the calculation. Would have then multiplied this by 27.5%. I'm just going to place 27.5% um, quickly insert the multiplication. There you go, set, close. Remember, this shouldn't confuse you. You are allowed to, uh, of, of course, uh, I have magnified this so that you can see. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to see anything. So please do not be confused by the fact that I've magnified. There you go. I want us to, to do the calculation manually. So I'd, I'd like to task you to do the calculation manually. So the, so you would have gone one seven one nine hundred minus 14,000 because we want to determine the remuneration. That amount is not remuneration. Minus 2,500 minus 10,000. You'll get to an amount of 145,400, which is essentially uh, your remuneration. Um, allow me to, because to, I don't have uh, sufficient space, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to write the amount of remuneration. There you go. Essentially, we just don't want remuneration, but we want to determine the 27.5 of that amount. So I'm going to determine the 27.5. 27.5 came to 39,985. There you go. So, so we wanted to determine remuneration so that we can take the 27.5 of that remuneration. The next item is easy. Don't worry. The next item will simply be it's, we're still using the 27.5, but in this case, it will be 27.5. It will be 27.5 of taxable income. Remember, we've already determined at this stage, we've already determined our taxable income. We've determined our taxable income by taking our gross income, lessing our exempt income, and uh, lessing... Uh, any other expenses in this case it was a funeral policy which is not deductible we arrived at an amount of taxable income before the retirement fund because essentially that's exactly what the act says it says we're going to determine on taxable income before we take into account the retirement fund so we don't have to do any calculation so we're going to take the one five five oh apologies so we're going to take 155400. So I'm going to put it we here with there. I'm going to put it there. It's 155400. I'm going to determine the 27.5 percent. Multiply by 155400. There you go. We're going to get an amount of 42,735. That's exactly what we're going to get. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the provisions of uh, Section 11F. It says uh, this deduction will be limited to the lesser of. Remember, we want to limit that deduction. I'm going to highlight that in, allow me to use green. There you go. We want to limit the 7,680. So 7,680, it's limited to the lesser of 350. Or the greater of those two amounts. So essentially what we're going to do, firstly, let's determine the greater of the two amounts. The greater of the two amounts is that one, which is 27.5 of tax income. The amount is 42,735. So we're going to, to limit this, that deduction to the lesser of 350 and 42,735. You can clearly see that that amount is the lesser of the two when you compare it to A. Now, remember, our deduction will be limited to that amount, but it will also be limited to what exactly we paid. So we won't be able to deduct that amount because we the taxpayer only contributed 7,680. So our deduction will be 7,680. There you go. Just quick emphasis. Um, Quickly do this. 
There you go. Just a quick emphasis. Also want to do this. There you go. Just a quick emphasis. Just a quick emphasis. Say, say this amount was 90,000 for argument's sake. Remember, we would have said the lesser of the two. We would have uh, determined that the lesser of the two would have been that amount, 42,735. If we had 90,000 there, the taxpayer actually contributed 90,000. But we're only going to deduct that amount because that amount is limited to the provisions of Section 11F. Um, yeah, this is where it ends. Uh, if there are any problems, uh, please uh, feel free to contact me via WhatsApp or you can post your queries to my email address. Thank you.